Hey guys, I hope you can join me next year at National Conference in Adelaide. I've got two things that I'm presenting there. A workshop prior to the actual conference on self-care for therapists, okay? So this, look, it doesn't get any more important in terms of therapist wellbeing, okay? We're gonna pick it apart the whole day. There's so much to address. I'm so super um, enthused about getting you to work as good and as effective as you can. The second day is peripheral nerve entrapments, and that is all about addressing something that goes under the radar, especially for you as therapists. So we're gonna be assessing everyone's tension, and we're gonna be looking for your own peripheral nerve entrapments. I can't wait to see you there. I hope you can join me. Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Connect and today I have Paul McCarthy with me. Welcome Paul. Thank you David, great to be here. So what are you doing here? What's well, your background? <laughs> well, interesting, my, my background is I was a musician for a long okay. time. So I spent uh, 10 years of my life uh, in a rock band trying to be a rock and roll star. Any um, particular instrument? Uh, I was a lead singer and a rhythm guitarist. Oh wow, so okay. So I sort of banged away at that for a long time. Uh, but my mother always told me eventually I'd have to get a real job and uh, yep. here we are, you know. so. Uh, what I found most difficult was the ability to really drive the economic engine of that pursuit. So to make right. enough money yeah. to create the kind of lifestyle well, I was looking for. It's one thing to be an for. artist and it's another thing to <laughs> actually make a, make a living out of being an artist. I yes, guess. and I think it's a lot, I mean many of the people uh, listening, many of the therapists, I think that entrepreneurs and, mm. and artists uh, are by nature quite creative people and they, they seek to serve and they want to do something that they're passionate about um, and I think that that is both your strength and your weakness and one of the lessons that I learnt you know as a musician in fact it was probably my first sure. real marketing lesson mm. uh, it was a long way back when I was playing my very first band and uh, we played in a battle of the bands competition wow, okay. and, and the prize for the competition was the chance to record a CD mm -hmm. and we were fortunate enough to win oh, wow, you know, so first time in my life I got to go into a recording studio I, I designed all the artwork for the CD cover and I remember driving to the manufacturers to collect these CDs and piling you know, boxes and boxes of CDs into the boot of my car I remember putting in the last box mm. ripping open the lid holding the CD in my hand going ah now we've got it, got the it. product. Now, yeah. I mean, it's only a matter of time. Mm -hmm. All we need to do now is wait, and it's all going to happen Wait and they us. will come. Yeah. And we waited, and we waited, <coughs> and we waited. And yeah. as I say to people, if anyone wants a copy of that CD, you know, they're still available. So, <laughs> um, so I think what I learned yeah. was having a product or a service to offer, that's the easy part. The real challenge is how do you get people to come through the door? Mm -hmm. How do you get them to keep coming through the door? How do you get them to bring other people through the door? And really... Now, these days, that's where I spend all my time, working with entrepreneurs, showing them how to amplify their expertise, mm. how to magnify what they do, amplify that out to the world so that people want to come towards them. And that's really a skill in itself. And uh, so I guess through the journey of being a musician, I did lots of sales, marketing type roles to keep myself alive while I was touring and gigging and and producing music videos and CDs and so forth. So I learnt or developed a lot of practical sales and marketing skills Great. and then sort of wandered into the, the pursuit of, you know, sort of marketing and coaching people mm. uh, and that was about 15 years ago. So I've been doing this work now for, for 15 years. Okay, fantastic. And uh, Paul, you've been doing um, corporate work mm -hmm. and uh, therapists would be interested in sort of what sort of webinars you might be offering at the moment. I, I think you're doing some webinars for the association coming up? Yeah, they've asked me if I would um, do a series, which I'm happy to do, mm. uh, because obviously um, the thing about marketing is that we need to immerse ourselves sure. in this type of thinking. Uh, and so it takes uh, committing some time and energy to it. And that's mm. really so that we put together a, a client attraction series of webinars. And what I'll be sharing is some of the, the practical strategies mm. that people can use to start to attract more of the type of clients that they want to work with and how to really allow them to step into their genius, how to be the best they can be at what they do. But I mean, a business has to do more than simply allow you the opportunity to do the work. Mm. I mean, you have to, if you're growing an enterprise, if you're growing a business, well, you need to do more than just be a good therapist. Oh, for sure. Um, so what, that's and what's really your thought on um, focusing uh, your interest or your energy into a particular area like for therapists it's such a it's such a broad uh area of interest as far as 
what sort of clientele they can attract into their business. Do you see focusing in on specific parts of that market an important thing? Yeah, look, I think that the key to success uh, in any pursuit, and certainly as a, as a therapist, mm. will be for people to find their unique ability. So to zone mm. in, rather than, I mean, uh, calling yourself by a general category or an industry means that you put yourself into a big mix. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that we're living in a world that's noisier than it's ever been. There are more things clamouring for our attention and we have less time to give them. So we don't see as many options. So if uh, a myotherapist wants to be found by a client, they have to start to zero in on areas of specialty. Mm. They, rather than being a generalist, you want to be a specialist. And the more specific you get and how you build some of the resources, and that's what some of the webinars are about, is how to develop resources that become more magnetic in their nature, that draw people towards you, mm. that help people to find you and your expertise before they actually even walk through the door. So they're already more predisposed to the idea of buying from you. And we had a little chance to, to chat before we started filming and uh, one of the questions came up about marketing plans. <laughs> Did you want to expand sure. on what you said? Which I thought was brilliant actually, yeah, the way you, you Well, I guess, that. you know, that uh, of course a plan mm. is important, mm. but I think that many people, uh, that will become kind of a default position that they will spend the energy and time devising a plan Mm. which is actually a way of stopping them from actually getting to do the real marketing that needs to get done um, because it's more comfortable. And we tend to drift away from doing the things that are, are difficult. Um, and, you know, I mean, Socrates talked about this, you know, 2,500 years ago, that, that we have this inbuilt thing that we move ourselves away from mm. those things, even to our own detriment that we do that. And I see that all of the time, that people not doing the work. So I have a very f simple philosophy that I teach all the entrepreneurs I work with, um, which is ready, fire, aim. Um, it's about action before perfection. Mm -hmm. um, we Marketing is an improv, you know, uh, imprecise science and we need to test and measure things. So we build something, we test it, and we need to be doing that at a speed mm. that allows us I to like get that. results yeah. much quicker. Yeah. Um, so my thing is uh, I don't want people to do things that are going to be laboursome, that you know, I spend days and weeks crafting this perfect plan only to put it in a drawer. I want them to do very practical strategies that will very quickly start to bring them the very clients that they're seeking. Okay, cool. And as far as word of mouth, that's obviously a very good way of mm. getting people through the door. What are some of the other really great ways of, of marketing or, or getting your word out there to, to your clients? Yeah, look, I mean, obviously, word of mouth, and we would mm. hope that all of us in the various work that we do are getting some word of mouth referral. It's an indication that we're doing good work. Yes, absolutely. Um, the problem with word of mouth is that it's typically one of the slowest methodologies, mm -hmm. um, and it's very reactive. We're waiting for it to happen. So. What we have to look at is, one, what are we doing to ignite that? How do we drive word of mouth referrals? So uh, one of the webinars will be going deeply into processes around referral generation, okay, um, how we plant referral seeds, how, how we really start to get our client base to become more active fans mm -hmm. of what we do. But I think uh, you know, HubSpot did a research project where they looked at the way that people choose a service provider. Sure. Now, Unsurprisingly, the number one way was word of mouth referral from a trusted friend or source. Mm -hmm. The second most common way was a referral from another service provider. So that's one area straight away that we go, okay, we, as a myotherapist, we're going to need to develop good professional relationships mm, where yeah, that network, so yeah. we become a trusted supplier to somebody else. So they go, oh yeah, I can't help you, but this is the person sure. to go to. The third most powerful way um, HubSpot found was that you have brand awareness. Mm -hmm. And so how we amplify a brand is that we've got to package expertise up and make it available okay. to people. So one of the things we'll be talking about is starting to build resources that tap into the knowledge base of the myotherapist and how they can package that and <coughs> give that knowledge away, which in turn brings people. And interestingly... The, the so that could be something like... Um uh, tips on nutrition, 
exercises to Correct. maintain function, those it, sorts it of things. It might be, you know, depending on their area of specialty mm. that they've, they've decided on. So if I'm curing headaches, if I'm solving back pains, if, I, if I'm dealing with sports injury, whatever is my area mm. that I put together something that's about that. So that I'm attracting the type of client that I want. Sure. And you're reinforcing, I guess, who you are as the expert or specialist Absolutely, in demonstrate your expertise yeah. before the person's even walked in. Okay. But, uh, and that's where, again, you know, the, the fourth most uh, common way that somebody finds a service mm. provider, according to the study, was they speak. They speak at a seminar or an event. So, again, all that is is giving away knowledge and building a relationship with an audience. Mm. So everything points to the same thing, is you must make yourself easier to buy, by packaging up what you know and giving it away. Okay, fantastic. We might finish it up there, folks, but uh, Paul, uh, is there any way that people can get in touch with you? Well, uh, my primary website is yep. themarketersclub.com.au, okay. so they're welcome to go and visit that. Um, and uh, we have a, a marketersclubacademy.com, mm. uh, and there they could also um, find uh, a, a free training program that they can do, a sort of a marketing crash okay. course. Yes. So if they want to go to the marketersclubacademy.com slash marketing crash course, there's a free course that they can take there if okay. they're interested in that. Fantastic. And of course, as mentioned a little bit earlier on the association website, Paul will be running uh, three, three. I think yep. three, three client webinars. attraction webinars. Can you remember those the titles of those? Uh, not without looking at my piece of paper. <laughs> but they're all basically, you're talking about um, yeah. magnetic marketing. Yeah, so we're talking about, we'll, we'll be talking about the message to market. Yeah. We'll be talking about the materials that you need to build. And we'll be talking about how you get referrals and recommendations. Okay, primarily. fantastic. So you'll, you'll hear more about those via e-news and uh, other ways in which you can contact the association. So again, Paul, thanks very much for your time. Pleasure. You guys, thanks very much. We'll see you next episode. Joining Massage and Myotherapy Australia is easy. Visit the Massage and Myotherapy Australia website www.massagemyotherapy.com.au Click join now where you can either join online or download an application form. Your qualification will define which level you join, massage, remedial or advanced member. Ensure you provide all information requested including certified copies of your academic transcript, qualification certificate and statutory declaration. It's important you certify documents and complete the statutory declaration. Documents can be certified by members of certain professions, such as medical practitioners and pharmacists. Also ensure you provide clinic details, first aid certificate and insurance certificate of currency. If you choose our preferred insurer Aon, you'll be eligible to receive a discount. Once your membership is processed, contact Aon directly via the Massage and Myotherapy Australia website. Once the association receives all required information, your application will be processed. Join now and choose the Association of Professional Therapists.